Sorry. Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ in Wright City. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning for worship. As we begin worship, if you would stand with me and if you would extend a hand of greeting or a wave, maybe a hug to someone and welcome them to Emmanuel today. I want to thank you for being here, Emmanuel Online Congregation. And today is Memorial Day Sunday and it's a day of remembering and honoring the Trinity of God. And so we're glad to have you with us today. Welcome. I'm gonna get up here so if you would take your hymnal and turn to 193. 193. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Trinity. 
ti. Amen. In the bulletin, the call, the worship, and litany together, let's share. We gather in the mystery to worship our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O God of mystery, you modeled the beloved community within yourself. You are the wisdom within our hearts, the word that dwells among us, the spirit who calls beyond ourselves. Let us know your presence today in a new way so that we might celebrate your love and go forth rejoicing. Amen. seated and children are welcome to come for children's time. So is everyone finished with school? No. no. Who said no? Yeah. What? Where do you go to school? Warrior Ridge? Oh, that's Warrington, isn't it? They have one extra week after, well, you guys started a little bit later, or is it the, or is no, it the Monday it thing? Ah, uh, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. We're going to cheer you across the line. I added salt. You what? I added salt. You do? You don't have it? Okay, no school. He has no school, y'all. He's good. Nothing to worry about. How y'all doing? No school? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, shoo. Now, my husband, Pastor Joe, is a para at the school, and he was so happy for Friday. Oh. <laughs> he was so happy. Yay. So I'm happy for you, too, and that you get to have a break from school. And if you have an opportunity to go to camp this summer, we encourage you to pick a camp and go have fun and learn about the Lord and just run and play and have a ton of fun. And just to let the grown-ups know, if you have kids that you would like to go to camp and need some scholarship help, just let us know. We have, some, we have a way. We want to make sure that if kids want to go to camp, that they can go. So our memory verse, this is the last Sunday for this month on memory verse. So it's 1 John, 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in, it's either in love or love. Either way, there is no fear in love. Perfect love cast out fear. Yeah, you got it. You have fun. You have fun with things. I like that. I know. It's supposed to be like this. Cast out fear. Right. I, I forgot that part. I'll try. Let's do it one more time. First John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. For perfect love cast out fear. Right. So when you feel fear or afraid, just think of ways that you can love into that situation. And it transforms the whole thing. It's kind of crazy. You know, like when someone's trying to be really mean and you try to find nice things to do, they're kind of taken back by that. They're like, what is going on here? They're not playing by the same rules. It's really cool. Okay, so give that a try. Well, so who is teaching children's church today? My mom. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Let me pray God's peace and blessings, okay? 
Lord, I thank you for our children, and we ask that you would raise them up to be great men and women of the Lord. We ask, Lord, that they would understand and experience your love, the love that casts out fear. For there's a lot of things that would want to make us afraid, but when your perfect love is at work, those things are cast out. So we pray this over them in your name. We also pray over their teacher that leads them today. And we ask, Lord, that you give wisdom. And we thank you for the gift of this learning about God and the scriptures and children's time in Sunday school. We give thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. You are welcome to go to children's Sunday school. Thank you, Miss Patty. If you would turn with me to Hymn 197, Glory be to God the Father, and if you are able, stand with me as we sing 197. It's just a few pages over. Glory be to God the Father, glory be to God the Son, glory be to God the Spirit, great Jehovah three in one. Glory, 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 while eternal ages run. Glory be to him who loved us, washed us from each spot and stain. Glory be to him who brought us, made us kings with him to reign. Glory, 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 glory to the Lamb that once was slain. Glory be to King of angels, glory to the church's King. Glory to the King of nations, heaven and earth, your praises bring. Glory, 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 glory to the King of glory, sing. Glory, blessing, praise eternal, bless the choir of angels sing. Honor, riches, power, dominion, thus its praise creation brings. Glory, 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 glory to the King of kings. You may be seated for the reading of scripture. Good morning. Good morning. Today's scripture morning. reading is from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, and that's found on your pew Bible, pages 1649 through 1650. Jesus is teaching Nicodemus. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with, you, with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with, 
so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher. And Jesus said, do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the son of man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the son of man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Jamie. Trinity Sunday. The mysterious three in one of God. God, like a parent, a father, a mother, as we see through in scripture. God in Jesus, our brother, our savior, and God in the Holy Spirit. These three distinct persons are one, co-creating with us. Bible scholars remind us that the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but there are a few Bible passages that refer to each of the three persons of God. And the passage today is one of a few that have it all packed in there where there's spirit, born of the spirit, and the father sent his son, and the son himself speaking of this wonderful work of the relationship with God. The doctrine or belief of the Trinity was formed because early Christians, and we're talking very early, like around, oh gee, let's start with a, <laughs> the beginning, uh, after uh, as Christianity was being formed, there was a uh, need to talk about the relationship between God and Jesus, or Jesus and God, or are they one? And then the Holy Spirit's relationship with all of that and with one another, between Jesus and the Spirit and the Holy Spirit and God. There was a need to talk about that in such a theological way that we could get our mind wrapped around it. This doctrine was decided upon after the Bible had been written. So about 325 AD, that's way back there. We're at what right now? 2024. So back at 325 AD, at a big old church get together called the Council of Nicaea, the Nicene Creed, which we often use in, in, from time to time, I think. Let's see, oh, that's a different one. I don't have it here. But there's a Nicene Creed, which is very similar to the Apostles' Creed. It was adopted. And to put it in context, the Bible was put together uh, with the current books and agreed upon around 100 AD. Okay, so this was like another uh, 225 years later where they could sit down and get that worked out. As I have sat in this sanctuary and I have considered the Trinity and how it mysteriously works, I'm often taken with the windows in this building. And this is where um, I have come to, to figure out the stories of Emmanuel. Because in our church history class, a long time ago, I learned that before uh, we had a literate society, which was a society that could read and we had printed Bibles and stuff, the way that people could be encouraged and learn the, learn the stories of the Bible was to go to the church and just gaze at the windows. And they would have Bible stories in them or there was, they would, the priest would teach the significance of the colors used. Uh, and in this case, although there's not Bible stories here, there's a strong belief in the Trinity in these windows. 
And so I'm sure everyone here can have a good look at the windows around you. And there's some repeating themes there. So um, I'm just going to use the one right close to me, but they're all around us. So the golden is God's presence. It's being God's presence. So if you can just get a feel for that when you sit in this room and the sun is just streaming through that goldenness, it's to give us the sense of being in God's presence. And then the blue signifies hope and the red is God's action of love, of the Holy Spirit, of suffering. That's what the red pieces are there for. But then I'm, I've, I've been caught with some time about this enigma thing. Uh, enigma means a thing I don't know exactly what it is, but it refers to something. So it's that, it looks kind of like a, a rose of sorts. It's green and purple with a red dot in the middle. And I've, I think I've talked with several of you about what is this thing? And well, it's, it's like the Trinity. And so I sat with it and I know that in color, uh, the meaning of color in Christian art, green is growth. And so there's growth in the purple signifies repentance, or it also signifies uh, the priestliness of, of God, of Jesus, God. So um, as I look at that, I sat and I just gazed at it for a while. Lord revealed to me this thing. And I, I can see the threeness there, the three green, the three purple. And as I looked at that, I recognized the threeness, and it reminded me, some may know the Irish knot, you know, kind of the three kind of ovals that intersect. And then there's also a thing called the uh, tra I'm going to get it wrong, trachirta, something like that. But um, it symbolizes the three. There, so this is a form of that trichirta. So um, I also, as I continued to look at it and pray, I could see the green or uh, this whole thing, this this enigma, being us. It, can, it has some human quality to it, like the green part is like our head. And then the two green are like arms wrapping around with this red, like our soul is on fire. And then the purple is kind of set in such a way to where it's kind of the background to where inside of ourselves, we're living a life of repentance, a life uh, that, is, that is humbled before the Lord. So when I look at that, I see the work of the Trinity in us, uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by the symbols there, and then the color of what's going on, and that red, that soul on fire sets the green of growing into motion in the, the life of repentance and humbleness before our sovereign Lord. So that's Pastor Kim's take on it. <laughs> Somebody can let me know the exact discussion that went on at the time of the, uh, putting it together. But um, that was a moment that I felt inspiration, uh, looking at the windows and listening and searching for the story of these windows. So the Trinity really speaks strongly to us. It identifies who we are. We're followers of the Lord who is the triune God, our father, father, mother, parent, the son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Today's passage in John 3 is one of the few that conveys being born of the Spirit and the action of God as parent, sending Jesus to love the world back to God in a saving way. John 3 is widely known for verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And indeed, 
God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. But if we look at the, the larger passage of chapter 3, those earlier verses that talk about the Spirit, being born from above by the Spirit, really capture me. I connect with those as well in that triuneness of what's going on here. Being born of the Spirit is a, sounds like a very woman thing. And it must have been awfully confusing for Nicodemus, who is a fella, who was not allowed to be in the presence of any kind of birthing stuff. But then here's Jesus, who's talking about being born again. And that it just doesn't compute upstairs. Being born again. I mean, Nicodemus may have understood that Jesus himself came from his mother Mary, that he was born from God himself, physically and spiritually in a big old way but not exactly the way that we are to be born again. The passage doesn't say exactly how we are to be born again, but that we must be born from above. And so maybe Nicodemus, who did say, in a, he did say, we know that you are from God, for the things that you do is only from God. So Nicodemus is definitely understanding who Jesus is. And he's coming at night because it's kind of a sketchy thing to believe that. Believe that Jesus is the one they've been waiting for. And to understand that he is from God, born of God. But for Jesus to say that we are to be born of God, how does that work? Now we know this many generations down the line now, we know that when we hear Jesus say, you have to be born of the water and the spirit, like, oh yeah, that's baptism. And yeah, that's, that's receiving the spirit of God into my life. That's being, having my heart on fire, like the little dots in the window, the red spots that burning, that, that little enigma's holding, the burning of the soul, the action of God at work. So verse 8, even further, pushes the issue that there's no straight directions on how to be born of the Spirit. It says, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. If you remember last summer, we went through the book of Acts and how the Spirit is so untamed. It is feral. The way the Spirit works with one doesn't work the same with the other. But the Spirit has its own comings and goings, and we're getting and we get caught up in that. The, the Spirit does work among us, and we experience the Spirit in individual ways. I believe there is no specific cookie cutter way. For some, it is at an altar of prayer. For some, it's simply being in worship wherever you are. Whenever you sing a song that connects you with God, maybe it's hearing a sermon. Maybe it's a scripture verse that you have on your heart. Maybe it's when you go out into nature and you see things that remind you of God and soon the Spirit speaks to your heart and you feel a burning inside. You feel God's presence. For me, it's watching things sprout up out of this dirt. This thing is living and is going to produce fruit and vegetables. I just can't believe it. Like, I put this little teeny thing in the ground and things start happening. It's earth shaking. And then I look at the dirt and I think this stuff saw the face of God at the beginning all together. It's beautiful. It moves me. Some may experience the Spirit in such a life-changing way when you celebrate a major event in your life. Maybe it's your baptism sometimes. Or maybe it's simply taking communion. For some, 
you may go through a terrible loss, but yet you feel God is with you in such a powerful way. You feel your soul burning inside. For some, many have talked about being at the birth of a child and how it just opens their mind to the presence of God. I've prayed with many couples throughout my ministry years who could not have children. They wanted children. And so we prayed together and we would fast. I've seen, I've, I've shown up to bless babies after they were born. And it's just like, I don't know, it's just fantastic. It's like showing up and, and it's like when you've prayed for this child on behalf of eager parents, it's just like the face of God. And um, it's a powerful experience. Then there's adoptions when those who have prayed for a child and they have they are blessed with an infant through adoption or a child through adoption it's like experiencing the joy of being at the face of god and then i kind of venture out here a little bit and talk about miscarriages a bit Although I have four children, I did have a miscarriage at three months. And of course, I'm a pastor, so it happened at church. <laughs> and it was pretty devastating. And even in that, the care that was given to me and the love that was given to me at such a time of loss, I felt that God was so present and my heart was burning with this thankfulness of God's presence in the midst of this mingled pain. The face of God. I went to a, a, I became great friends with a gal that was going through ministry preparation and she has um, CF, um, cystic fibrosis and needed a lung transplant. And I was, I was with her on her journey when she was at Barnes Jewish and received a, a, her transplant. And as I stood there praying, her dad's there, her husband's there, and her little body is so gray, and we're waiting for a transplant. We had gotten word that a transplant could come within three hours. We were waiting for the family on the other end in another state to say their goodbyes. And it was just like I was watching the life just dripping out of my friend. And we just prayed and we prayed, but yet knowing in that liminal weird space that there is a family grieving and saying goodbye and making awful decisions that they would have to make, but yet there could potentially be a big change and joy come in this situation. And through all of that, I was praying for this family and this family. And to make a long story short, when my friend received her lungs and she came out of surgery and she was pink, it was like the presence of God. It was the whole, the whole thing was the presence of God. It was so powerful. My heart burned with God's presence. Have you experienced God's presence? It can be very small in a quiet way. It doesn't have to be anything over the top. Like I said, it can be just holding some dirt. <laughs> it can be just sitting alone. It can be in a moment that you least expected, maybe in a fast food restaurant, who knows? Because the spirit cannot be tamed, and the spirit doesn't play by the rules. This is the God of the triune. Nicodemus must have felt this burning in his soul as he was there with Jesus, in the, in the presence of the living God, asking these questions about how can I be born again? How can I be born of the Spirit? So what would you say to Nicodemus? 
How did God's presence change you? As I said before, I don't think that there's any specific prescription, but just a longing and a surprise for what it feels like. I was recently talking with someone who's like, I just don't think I've ever been in God's presence. But then they began to share with me about playing drums and worship service at their church and was like just expressing this joy and this thrill of seeing people respond to God and being part of that. And I said, you experienced God's presence in that joy. It comes in the most unexpected ways. It can be joy, and it can happen in times of sadness. But I encourage you, be Nicodemus. Go to the Lord Jesus and ask the question and dig for the answer until you can experience this God, the three in one. And I'm not saying you got to live in some glory all the time. Just that you know the peace of the Lord. Let's pray. In this time of silent prayer, be Nicodemus. Ask Nicodemus, ask Jesus, I mean, ask Jesus about what this means, the Spirit. And even Jesus, how does he affect your life? And what does it mean to have God the Father looking on and sees you? Lord, we give thanks for your speaking. Maybe we didn't hear anything, but maybe when we looked at the windows today, our hearts were stirred. Maybe we saw ourselves in the enigma, being reminded of those times of growth that come from within, and we felt our heart burning with the spirit of love, of joy. So Lord, minister to our souls as you see fit. Father, we bring before you prayer requests of many who are suffering. We pray today for David for Amber, Lynn, Mackenzie, Liz, Bruce, Joy and Peter, Betty, Debbie, John and Dee. And Lord, there are others not listed here but are in just as much need to know that you are touching their lives, that they matter, that you recognize the suffering and that you are present to heal, to love, and to walk along on the journey. Lord, we remember our world. On this Memorial Day weekend, we pray for so many that have had loved ones that have died in war. Some were in combat with dear friends 
who were lost in combat. We pray for those that remember as well the trauma that they live with. We pray, Lord, that your healing hand would be at work in their lives. We are thankful for our country, for those who serve. And Lord, we do pray this healing in the wounds of their suffering, of their mind and their body through the years. We pray for our world and know that war is still going on. We ask, Lord, for your peace to come. If it has to be individually, then may it be so. For you can work beyond the boundaries of governments and all of the politics and go right to the heart of individuals and meet them in their need. So we pray this. We pray for a transforming work in our world as your spirit moves individually through people groups and does healing for our world. Hear the cries of those who suffer. We pray for justice to come. And put on our hearts our part in bringing justice. And our part in hearing the cries of those that have needs in our community and to respond. And we pray this in the name of the Lord, the trying God, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. In response to the good news today, let's receive our tithes and offerings. Let's stand and sing the doxology as we receive tithes and offerings. Praise God from all blessings fall. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Amen. Lord, we thank you for the gift, and we thank you for the opportunity to give. We ask that you would give us wisdom and a heart of courage to spend these gifts in ways that bring, the, bring heaven down to earth and transform our world. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Our closing hymn 
is 195. Come thou almighty king, 195. serenity prayer. I believe that's on your pink card in your pew. Let's pray this as our closing benediction today. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Amen. May you go in peace and share the love of Christ with the world. Amen. so much for joining us on this beautiful Sunday. We have a few announcements. Uh, there was a Memorial Day observance and remembrance ceremony that was supposed to happen on May 21st, earlier this week, as well as the Memorial Day observance um, color troop ceremony on the 27th tomorrow. Um, both of these have been canceled uh, due to just weather and wet conditions. We are still having a Wright City Cemetery Memorial Day observance that will be taking place tomorrow, uh, May 27th at 2 p.m. at the Wright City Cemetery flagpole. Bring your lawn chair and we'll just be celebrating in those festivities and remembrances. Um, if there is inclement weather, then we will be meeting in the Emanuel UCC Fellowship Hall. We hope that you have a wonderful week and bless you.